it is only in the book of Revelation that the author calls himself John. In the Gospel, he reserves this name for the Baptist alone. It is the same as the name Lazarus, turned outside in. Lazar is an abbreviated form of El Azar, both Aramaic, from the Hebrew Eli Ezer. El is God, as in the Elohim, the seven creator spirits of form, bringing forth the outer beauty of the earth. Ezer means something like help. The other main word for God, Yahweh, voices the divinity of the I Am, and to bestow help of an inner kind, grace, is Hanan, hence the name Yehohanan, John. Lazarus leads the way, as shown last time, in the second half of the book. The first half, on the other hand, stands under the witness of John the Baptist. He is invoked immediately preceding the chapter on the raising of Lazarus. And they said, John did no sign, yet all that John said about this one was true, and we know that his testimony is true. The same words characterize the testimony of Lazarus at the end of the book. During the initiation of Lazarus, Jesus connects the two witnesses by abiding in John's original workplace. And he withdrew again beyond the Jordan to the place where John, baptizing, originally was. And there he remained. The mystery event of Bethany is guided from the realm of the Baptist, who thus illumines Lazarus's experience. John shines as witness from the realm beyond death. Another it is who bears witness of me and I know that the witness he bears of me is true. You sent to John, and he bore witness to the truth. I take testimony not from man, but I speak these things that you be saved. He was the burning, shining lamp you wanted to delight for an hour in his light. This implies that the Baptist has already vanished for earthly consciousness. That is because with Christ's connection with humanity, John completes his task. John too was baptizing at Ainon near Salim, for there there was much water. And they came and were baptized, for John had not yet been put in prison. Now an inquiry arose from among the disciples of John with a Judean concerning purification. And they came to John and said to him, 
Master, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, for whom you bore witness. Behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it be given him from the spiritual world. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, Not I am the Christ, but am sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, and the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices in joy at the voice of the bridegroom. This my joy is filled. He must increase. I must grow small. John is always deferring, giving way, becoming periphery. In death, the soul becomes periphery. Lazarus portrays John in that state the entire time, because that is how he encounters him in the initiation, namely dead. He collaborates in forming the circle of the disciples around Jesus. The next day, John was standing again, and also two of his disciples. And he looks upon Jesus, walking, and says, Behold, the Lamb of God. And his two disciples heard him speaking, and they followed Jesus. In the afterlife, John becomes the inspiring genius of the circle of disciples. This too is the out-of-body experience of Lazarus after the death of John. By his esoteric schooling, he recognizes the incarnation of Christ in Jesus in the baptism in the Jordan. The next day, he sees Jesus coming toward him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God who bears the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me will come a man who before me was, for he goes before me. I myself knew not who he was, but that he become manifest to Israel. Therefore did I come, baptizing in water. And John bore witness, saying, I beheld the Spirit descending like a dove out of heaven, and it remained upon him. I myself knew not who he was, but he who sent me to baptize in water, he said to me, Should you see the Spirit descending on someone and remaining upon him, he it is who baptizes in Holy Spirit. And I have seen and borne witness. This is the Son of God. Here John invokes his master of the Essene cloister of Qumran where the baptismal basins can still be seen today, who taught him to perceive clairvoyantly the moment when the soul was loosened from the submerged body for a glimpse of the approaching spirit of Christ, 
or in this case, his incarnation. Recognizing that the time was at hand, the Essenes sent John to bring the baptism out to the people. Between the subterranean depths of the place of baptism in the Jordan Rift and the rock grave of Lazarus in Bethany, there is a mysterious relation. That happened in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Lazarus names that place where Jesus tarried to accompany his dying as if it were one with the place of his death, as mystery center. Despite speculations about his earlier incarnations, John forgets his own great past to make room for the coming of Christ. And this is the testimony of John when the Judeans of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and denied not and confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he says, Am not. The prophet are you? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you, that we give answer to those who sent us? What say you about yourself? He spoke, I, the voice of one who calls, in the loneliness of the soul, make straight the way of the Lord as spoke Isaiah the prophet. And a delegation of the Pharisees was there, and they questioned him and said to him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them and said, I baptize in water, in your midst, stands he whom you know not, he who is to come after me, before whom I am not worthy to loosen the thong of his sandal. John really was the return of the spirit of Elijah, as Matthew confirms. He surrenders all of that in his devotion to Christ. On the other hand, he does know of the pre-earthly divinity of Christ. John bears witness for him and proclaims clearly this is he of whom I said, After me will he come who before me was, for he goes before me. In the two-way stream of time, Christ appears as both origin and goal. Finally, John appears as the first earthly man in the meditation with which Lazarus prepares for initiation. 
a man came into being, sent from God, whose name is John. Apart from the missing and, this is the same formula used in the Greek version of the creation story of Genesis, as in, and there was light. Here, in this monumental context of cosmic evolution, Egeneto Anthropos, there was man, takes on a positional value. In Hebrew, on the analogy of and there was light, Wayehi or and there was man would be Wayehi Adam. Lazarus, the beloved disciple, is mentioned only in the second half of the book, John only in the first. In the middle, the two meet. The composition hints at a relation between the two witnesses.